It's Jessie Mamulita Martinez and welcome back. Bye. Bye. But today I have a story time for you guys and I'm going to be talking about the time that I ended up in ICU. So to start you guys off so that you guys get a little background of like why I went to the hospital. So first off, I would have a lot of headaches and nausea and like, I just have a lot of like head problems, I guess. It was happening from when I was 15 to 18 when I went into the hospital. I was at work one day and wasn't feeling so well. So I was like, something's wrong. I need to go home, like go lay down or something. Cause I felt, nauseous my head hurt and i felt like i was gonna pass out right there on the floor i needed to get home so i called my mom and i was like hey can you come pick me up i feel sick so she did she came over she picked me up she brought me home and i was like okay i'm just gonna stay here for a little bit because like i don't think i need to go to the hospital i'm good i'm fine i just like have a really bad headache but like my headaches go from like really good to really bad really quick we'll just wait it out see how it goes see what happens so i waited out the end of the day i'm like nope i have to go in i need to go to the hospital so we went to the hospital we got there and i was waiting for them to check me in and everything and i was sitting down and tell me why i was at the hospital and there was people like bleeding and like like there was people in the waiting room like hurt and i was like okay i need to go home like i'm not supposed to be here I got to the back and it, my head wasn't hurting as much anymore, but this did a, did a physical exam to see like if anything was going on and they put the light up to my eyes and that's where everything went wrong. So they were like, okay, something's going on. We need to get an MRI scan. And I was like, what's an MRI scan? Pictures here that I have from the hospital and like just pictures to show you guys like what I'm talking about. I was like, okay. I can do it. MRI scan? Not so bad. I, I, I got this. I got this. It was terrifying because this was my first ever MRI scan and my mom's not allowed to be in there. So I was freaking out, but I was like, okay, I got this. Like, I got this. I got this. So they took me back there and they were like, okay, we're gonna strap you up. They put an IV in me so that they could um, put some liquid in me to make the images in the MRI um, more clear. Anyways, I went to the back and they were like, okay, sit down. Um, when you're in there, here's this button because you can't move. And I was like, what? I can't move? I was petrified. I moved too much, as you can tell. I moved too much, so I was like, this is gonna, like, I'm like, you tell me I can't move, I'm gonna wanna move. So I was screaming in my head and then they were like, okay. And then after a little while, we're gonna put this stuff in you to make the images. And I was like, is it gonna hurt? Is it gonna like, is it gonna be cold? Like wh what's going on? So they put me in the machine and they're looking at my brain and they put this big helmet like thing. I'll show you a picture um, on my head. And I'm just like, this is terrifying. I'm so scared because um, I've never been in one of these things before. You say that I need to be in here for 30 minutes. And I'm like, 30 minutes? I can't be still for 30 minutes. Who do you think I am? After I'm done with the MRI, I'm like, thank goodness I don't have to be in that little cubicle anymore. They get me out. They're like, okay, you can go back to your room. They take me ship me off to the room again and I have to wait for results. So we're waiting there for like an hour for the results of the MRI. The doctor comes in and she's like, okay, we looked at your results. Everything looks okay. Um, your MRI was fine. We looked at it and you're free to go. You told me that I, me, Spent 30 minutes in this little cubicle to tell me that I'm free. Free? Okay. 
So me and my mom are like, okay, no answers again. We go home. I'm all drowsy and dizzy because they gave me so many like medications there to stop my headache. I lay down, I go to sleep. I wake up the next morning to a phone call from the doctor saying, you need to come back to the emergency room ASAP right now to get admitted. My mind is racing, like what, what's going on? Like what, what does admitted mean? I found out. I had no idea like what was going on because they said my MRI thing was fine. Like, um, like why do I have to go back? Like, did you call the wrong person? Um, and my mom's like, okay, we have to go. You need to like get your stuff so that we can go. And I'm like, hmm, I don't want to. Um, but we ended up going. We got to the hospital, we checked in um, at the front desk, like where all the like big rooms are. We get to the front stand and then she's like, why are you here? And I'm like, I have no idea. They called me, said to come back. And they're like, oh yeah, um, you're right here. Go to this room. And so we went up the elevator, went up to that room, got there. There was another like desk. Um, and there was like more people, like there's more desk receptionists there. And they were like, they were like, why are you here? And I was like, I have no idea. Can you tell me please? Cause I, and then they were like, oh, your, your room's over here. And I was like, my room? I was like, okay, maybe I'll be in there for like a day. We'll see like how this goes. So I go into the room and they're like, put this gown on. They haven't told me anything at this point. So I have no idea what's going on. They just told me to come here and then they take me to the IC unit. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? Cause nobody's told me anything at this point and I'm freaking out. Put the gown on and they're like, okay, the doctor will be in soon. We will see you later, bye. So about 20, 30 minutes later, doctor finally comes in. He's like, oh, hey, so I looked at your scan from yesterday in the emergency room and there was something um, in the back of your head, like a lesion or something. So we need to get it checked. Um, well, we thought we saw something. So we wanna like make sure that we're seeing it right and at the time I was 18 years old and this doctor is a kid doctor. So he wasn't supposed to be looking at my scan because he's only for 17 and under. And at that time I was 18. So he told me that since I was so young and I had just turned 18 that year, everything was covered the bills and the the rooms and like all the tests and stuff we didn't have to pay for because he wanted to make sure that there was nothing wrong. So he's like, okay, so we need to take more tests, um, figure out like what's happening back here. Um, and I was like, okay, just a couple tests and then we're out of here. No. Um, no. And then he was like, okay, so we're gonna have you do an MRI scan and a CT scan. So I had to do another MRI and I was like, oh no, I'm gonna be in the box again. So I was preparing for that. Um, and about an hour later, they put me in the box again. This time I gotta listen to music. This was a plus. I was like, yes, music, thank you. So I wasn't bored. This was a whole hour scan that I had to do. So I was like, okay. I have music, I'll be fine, it'll go by quick. Um, Justin Bieber played out one moment, I think they saw my brain light up. So. And then after the scan, they took me back, they had me do a CT scan. Now, the CT scan, when they put the fluid in your IV to make the images nice and crisp, yeah, it makes it feel like you peed yourself. And it is the worst feeling in the world. I hate being hot. I like cold. I have the fan on when I'm sleeping. I have like, I like coldness. I'd rather be cold than I'd be hot. And this literally, like when it went through, it felt like I was suffocating. I am dramatic, but it felt like I was suffocating. 
I never wanted to do that one again. I was hoping they wouldn't have me do another one of those because I was like, nope, no way. That's not happening. It feels like you're peeing yourself and it does. I got up and I had to check myself, make sure because I don't know. Get back to the room and I'm like, okay, that's it. We're good. They say, okay, that's all the tests for today. See you tomorrow. I had to stay overnight. So I was like, okay, stay overnight. It's fine. We'll figure it out. So I had to call my work and be like, hey, I can't come in today. I'm in the IC unit. And you know how, like, me calling my work and being like, hey, I'm in the IC unit. I can't come in and I'm talking and vocal and they're just like, oh, what's wrong? And I'm like, I don't know. And they're like, oh, okay. How am I supposed to explain that? How? Like, I'm not lying. I'm here. Do you want a picture? I got some. Like, also when I came into the IC unit, which is there and the doctors there were so surprised that I even walked into the IC unit. They were like, they came in and they were like, I've never seen anybody walk into the IC unit. I was like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think I'd be here either. Look, the next day they gave me my results and he goes, okay, so we looked at your test. There's nothing um cancerous or anything that they may think is like really bad they were going for a couple of the autoimmune diseases that they think that i may have had which would have been multiple sclerosis and lupus so he says we're gonna have to do some more testing i go okay let's hop me up in the mri machine let's go I'm put some music on and he goes yeah so we're gonna give you an mri scan and a spinal tap a spinal tap if you don't know what a spinal tap is it is when they get a needle and insert it into your spine to get spinal fluid out of there and i was petrified i was terrified that is like a needle he was like, okay, we're gonna have those two tests ready for you. We'll come get you in a little. I get the MRI again. They gave me music. This one was like a little longer. It was like an hour and 30 minutes. They wanted a longer scan of my brain. So they did that. And then it was time for the spinal tap. Oh. So they're like, okay, let's take you in for the spinal tap. Let's go. And I was like, oh, I'm like, my mom can't go in. It's a procedure type of thing. So <sighs> she couldn't go in and I was freaking out and I was crying. And I get into the room and the lady's like, okay, just sit on the bed. And then the guy with the needle, he's just sitting there and he's like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh my goodness, that's going to go in my spine. Um, yeah, I was having literally a panic attack. I was crying, I was hyperventilating. They're like, just be calm, you're okay, you'll be fine. I was like, will I? Because I'm kind of scared. Now, it wasn't that, it wasn't bad. It was just like the fear of literally the needle going in my spine. It didn't hurt or anything, but just that fear of that. It was long, just like, They're doing the procedure and he's like, okay, if you feel any numbness, you need to tell me. And I'm like, okay, I will, I promise. Um, so I am, every time he does something in there and then I feel numb, I'm like, I'm numb, I'm numb, stop, I'm numb. And he's like, okay, and he takes it out and then he put it in, back in and then like wiggle it or whatever. And they're trying to get spinal fluid. So he's in there trying to get some spinal fluid and then um, he's like, okay, I need to take it out. And so he takes the whole thing out and then he goes, okay, I need to put it back in. I'm like, huh? They put it back in like three or four times because they couldn't get any spinal fluid out of my spine. And I was ready to cry again, more to be honest. Um, so you kept taking it out and putting it back in, taking it out because they couldn't they they couldn't get any like enough spinal fluid. They're supposed to get like this much. They're supposed to get like this much. I'll put a picture if I can find a picture of how much they're supposed to put. And they literally could only get like this, like not even like they got like a drop 
of my spinal fluid. They could not get any more. And I was like, oh great, now I have some holes in my bag for nothing. And I was panicking because I was like, what well, if they don't have enough and they have to do it again later on. I was like, okay, we're finished. We'll have put you back in your room and like give you the results later. And I was like, okay, like you better not come back for me later. And I go back in and they tell me that I need to lay down for at least an hour flat on my back and not get up or anything. And I was like, okay, got it. I'll do that. Now, nobody told me that you need to actually be laying down for at least 24 hours or 48 hours or else you'll get the worst headache of your life because of the spinal tap. So when spinal fluid gets out, it creates this headache that is terrible it's like you can't even get up because once you get up you li like literally everything is like whew, like flat like literally everything is just whew, and you have to just lay back down or else you'll just like fall like my legs were just like whoa like just turning like melting literally i thought this was gonna be like my last night staying here i thought they were gonna be like okay so give me the results and We'll be gone we'll, we'll get out of here um so that they could just look at the mri and do that so they got the mri results and they said that same thing it looks like maybe some kind of autoimmune disease so they were still going for multiple sclerosis or lupus and i was like okay like where does that put us and they were like okay we might give you to a different doctor so that they can do more tests and i was like okay this day rolls up we're waiting for the results early in the morning. Got my breakfast that I bought, and we're me and my mom are eating. My dad brought me sweatpants so that I'd be comfortable, even though it was my last day. I was ready to go home. So they come in and they're like, "Okay, so we got your results for your spinal fluid." They told me I was good to go home. Nothing was wrong. Nothing, everything was fine. Um, they took out my IV. I changed out of my gown into my regular clothes. And I was set to go. So I was like, yes, I gotta go home. Um, everything's fine. They're gonna, they went to go get the discharge paper so that I could leave. And the doctor comes back in. And he goes, I'm sorry, but you can't leave. We found bacteria in your spinal fluid. So we need you to stay here admitted in the hospital for three more days three more days i was like i can't treat it at home and they were like no because it might be life-threatening so we need to take care of it right now right here to make sure nothing happened they had to put my iv back in me and they couldn't get it in it took them six tries to try and put it in and they couldn't so they had to get an IV specialist to come in and poke me more and get it in. But thankfully she was amazing and she did it on my wrist right here, like on my hand, which is nice because then I could like bend it and like go to sleep. But she did it right here and she just stuck it through. I didn't even feel anything. I didn't feel a pinch. So finally, I have my IV in, we're back in, they can put my antibiotics that I need to have in me. So they start running those. So I was just laying there and I was like, my chest starts to burn and it starts to itch. Okay, something's not right because it started to like go everywhere, like itching. My legs were itching, like the under parts, my like, like random parts of me were just itching. And I was like, I was like, wait, I think it's the medicine because it literally happened like right after the medicine. It literally took like not even two seconds for it to start. They slowed down the dose of the medicine that I was getting the antibiotics. It wasn't working. They were like, okay, we need to stop it. We're gonna need to give you a different antibiotic. Um, so the one reason I had to stay, they couldn't even give me it. So that was great. Um, but since I couldn't have the antibiotic that they were giving me, I had to stay in there to be watched. I had to get the pill form of that um, once I left the hospital. They just kept coming in saying they didn't have any other results. 
the rest of the days though, I finally got the aftermath of my spinal tap and I had the biggest headache of my life. For the rest of the three days, I was just having this painful headache. Um, family was coming in to see me and I literally couldn't keep my eyes open because of this headache. This headache was worse than the one I came in for, for the actual hospital too. And I was like, what is going on? Like we're literally just backtracking now. Um, after the three days are finally up, I get to go home. Please let me go home. But they do. They're like, okay, you get to be discharged. You're free to go. Um, make sure you keep taking your antibiotics because later on they gave me the pill there at the hospital they found um one that i could take and i had to get put in a wheelchair to go downstairs because i could not get up oh yeah and to remind you these whole week that i'm in the hospital i need to call my work every day i got fired i was like yeah i saw that one coming it was a wild ride oh yeah and I never got answers. I still don't know to this day what was in the MRI or anything. The doctors, because they were doing checkups and stuff, they were like, they would just do more MRIs, but they haven't given me answers. So like, it's 2020. I did that in 2017 and I still don't have answers. I hope you guys enjoyed this story time. If you guys want any other story times, um, comment down some story times that you could think of that maybe I have stories about. Um, I have some haunted stories and like ghost stories. So if you want those, comment them below. See you guys on my next video. Bye. What we do here is go back, 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 back.